Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just tell me in peace out to the rest of you. The blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media. Sign of black and shining again asking you to hit the share button. Because the message is more important than the messenger. And well, this message, uh, you may think it's two messages at first. But no, hear me out. In about two minutes you'll know that it's not two messages, it's, it's one. But in order to keep the message consistent, I'm going to start by answering Captain Solo's question. Uh, shout out to Captain Solo. Um, Captain, I'm not going to publicize the question you asked me in the email. Excuse, I would say excuse me, but no, that was actually a pretty good one. Had a kind of a rumble to it just now. All right, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm drinking a carbonated beverage, so if I belch, deal with it. Um, so you asked the question in the email, but I won't publicize what that is. But uh, the answer I can publicize without uh, violating your privacy. So I'm going to answer this for the audience completely. Um, as far as the arguments go about the recategorization and representation of uh, not black, black people, or as they say, dark white or anything else other than just calling us light skinned folk. I'm not in favor of, of us representing black folks to other black uh, to other people of color. Now, when let's say Ethiopia and Gambia trade embassies, I don't necessarily care what shade the Gambian is, if he's a light skinned Fulani, or if he's a, a, a medium Mandingo or if he is well off in jet black. The Gambian ambassador to, let's say, Ethiopia can be any shade. I don't care because you find everything in Gambia, but predominantly they are well-off and they're jet black. I do not care if, if the Ethiopian ambassador to Gambia is a light-skinned uh, Tigre or if he's a really light-skinned Amhara or if he's a dark-skinned Amhara or Garaga. I don't care, to be honest. It doesn't make a difference because that's internal. When the African Union sends an ambassador to, an ambassador to let's say, the States as an example, I prefer that they send the jettest, blackest, I know that's not a word, jettest, blackest, widest nose, biggest lip, biggest foot, 4C, nappy, beady, beady, ground up taco meat looking hair having Nick Rowe as the ambassador because that's external. I do think that we should pick the phenotype that other people like the least to send to represent us. Now, if we're talking diplomacy, you would say, why the hell would you do it? Simple. Because white supremacy is a religion. It is a false and satanic religion, and I treat it as such. So that's why I'm willing to do justice to the topics of even colorism, but I'm not willing to entertain it for the same reasons that oftentimes the women are. See, when the ladies into, uh, enter into the discussion, as I mentioned before, they largely enter into it with regards to um, who should get first access to the rich white guy's wallet who should be considered the most beautiful so that he grows up thinking that she's the most beautiful so that she has first dibs on his resources. That's where uh, they come in. Now, if I address colorism and I do address women's mate selection, so damn what? Because again, as I've said before, my reason for now um, promoting double standards that they would find unfair is because this is war. Just like our relationship with many other peoples, not all, but many other peoples around the globe is a type of war, maybe a cold war. So too, unfortunately, has our relationship been with women, especially in a Western context. It's war. It's a reproductive war. And we didn't start it. They did. The ones of them that did not participate in this war, the women that did not participate in it, usually are referred to as pick me's and they get dissed which means that it's, it, there's a hostility on the side of, of ladies towards the men. And they're not upset with us about anything that we've done that was hostile as a whole, as a collective. They're upset because of how we are. They just hate the way that we are. We're simple. Uh, sex and peace are important to us so they sit up and say well which one is it going to be maybe even neither one but your damn sure ain't going to get both there's just something in many of them maybe I think it's socialization that trains them to just hate the way that men are sex and peace are important they say okay well just those two we're not going to allow to be in a combination 
and you know the quality of sex the 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 way you you know you like what she looks like and they're just like no nope, not gonna have that either uh-uh if we know how to look we're not gonna know how to act you're going to suffer and if it's, there's nothing in it for her she's still going to make you suffer that's war So, and it's almost like a type of spite for no reason. That's why it is that I said what I said about the double standards in the last recording and before that I said that it was just outright war. Now, let's take Samara Long. Samara Long is an example of this. When a woman is willing to ask you for money and resources, whatever her situation is, no matter how bad it is, but she's got standards, that's war like Samara Long. Mediocre tattoos, um, I'm sorry, tattoos, what am I, why am I thinking that? Mediocre tutorials and reviews posted a picture of a screenshot of Samara Long and the screenshot included on one side her profile page, BBW, ain't got no time for no broke niggas. Uh, she's a Walmart cashier in Stockton, California. But then on the Right, our right side of the same screenshot, there's her in a conversation with somebody else. Some dude talking about my daughter now homeless, we need some food money. He said, what that got to do with me, Miss Strong and Independent? Nothing. Your mama's a B word. That's war. And I'm not even blaming her for being a mom and looking to feed her kid. The problem is she's going about it the wrong way. She's a cashier and big and she's got standards like this. You got to be making money. Now she's homeless and some other man's responsible to feed her kid. Gentlemen, if you want to volunteer to help a child out, I understand that. As most of them, I get it. But if you want to volunteer to help a child out, do so. Don't help the mother out. Unless, of course, there's some kind of trade for it. Now, I'm not talking about tricking, but I'm just saying that they, they, they you know, they can have other skills. It could be that they could fix some busted up clothes. It could be that, um, you know, let's say, let's say it could be that, hey, look, uh, I know how to wash the clothes with half the water and not tear your clothes up. There's a way to do it. If, if they can do it, okay, fine. But I'm just saying don't just be kicking out stuff to them for free. Just don't do it. And truth be told, if you want to help out a kid, the best thing you can do is cover some of the education or some of the school supplies. That's the best way. Not put money in mom's hand. No, because then uh, what's mom going to do? So um, what I'm saying is that because it's war, uh, you got to act like it. And what I was going to tell you all in this case is that since it's war, you're going to have these guys coming to you along with the women trying to tell you, well, maybe you're the trouble you've had with ladies is your fault. No, 87 percent of men are having trouble with women and didn't start these troubles. 80, so you're going to tell me that 87% of men are just dumb idiots that go and start trouble with women for no reason because they like to? 87%? No. I know that C. Boogie said that there are three lanes. And really, in the eyes of the majority of Western women, there are not three. There are two, lust or lick. And the boyfriend is, is not even one of the lanes for a lot of the women. So women do recognize three lanes. But uh, there are many that don't. An increasing number do not recognize the boyfriend lane. You're the, you're the lust or the lick, and only 13% of you are the lust. And that's it. Now, they all want the same thing. So why is it that only 13% of men have figured it out? Well, because they won't say what it is they want. That's why 13% 13 13 is about the percent that's able to look and figure out what it is that they want without them have actually saying it. Dating sites will tell you this. I'm not making this up. Obsidian uh, has pointed this out before. That's one of the reasons I said that you should not be approaching Western women, black or white. You should not be doing it, gentlemen. 13% of you are going to succeed, or those of you in the middle might succeed 13% of the time. So when these men come to you and they try to tell you, well, maybe it's just something you're doing wrong, you shut it down immediately. See, when you're 13 years old, it could be because you don't know. Same when you're 15, you're still learning. It's not like they explain it very well, is it? 
16, 17, and 18, you're still learning some things. They're still keeping things a, a secret. So the fact remains that when you're young, it could be something you're doing wrong, which usually would be out of just pure de ignorance. You just don't know. That's not your fault. And then when you get older and you do learn all of the do nots because they're vocal about that, it's the do's they don't tell you, then you still eliminated everything you've known. So eventually at some point you got to say no, it's how to communicate. And they don't. They can talk endlessly more than I can about anything as long as it's boring as hell to you. They cannot talk about sports because you're interested in that. And they can't talk about what they actually want and how they respond to certain things. Again, because you're interested in that. They have to talk about things that bore the uck out of you. And then they can do it endlessly. You don't fib a guck about that beast you don't like at work that ain't really even doing nothing to her. You got to worry about your boss that actually does blame you for things you didn't do or a colleague blaming you for things you didn't do. You don't have to tell her. You just need her to know that, right? You may need her to know in advance. Look, I'm doing my job at work. If somebody's blaming me for stuff I didn't do, if I lose my job, that's why I'm telling you now because I'm doing my work. You may need to tell her that. And it still doesn't matter. I had to learn that the hard way. I remember telling my first wife when I found out that, that the white chick at the job was going after the brothers, blaming brothers for stuff they didn't do. They're not making quotas. They're not answering the phone, stuff like that. Always having something to say about it. It was the black women that were looking out for us. And this is why it is that I will say, God bless black women that do look out for black men and I'm willing to look out for them. I have experience with that. But when I went and told my wife at the time what was going on, just to let her know that if I got laid off, it was not because I wasn't doing a job. Just to let her know this, she still got upset with me. Later on, people got laid off from the job and I was not one of them because they knew I was doing my job. So the people got laid off. Guess what? I told my wife, listen, a bunch of people got laid off at the office today. I was not one of them. Thank God. Later on, when I lost a good job, it was a layoff. The only good job I had as an adult in the U.S., she was sitting up talking about, well, um, you were just lucky that you got that job. Instead of saying, oh, well, you did the job well and they, they fired you for something or they laid you off for something else. She didn't even want to extend that, even though we knew that's what it was. She didn't even want to extend that possibility. Well, no, you were just lucky you got that job. That's war, to a certain extent. It gets worse than that, though. You're going to be told that every time you get laid off, it's your fault. It may be, it may not, but not every time. You're going to be told every time that it is your fault, and that's where the lie lies. You're going to be told that every time they're attractive and they give you mixed messages and then blame you because you can't read their minds, it's your fault. That's a damn lie. You're not responsible to read their minds. You're going to be told that um, if every single time a woman comes at you, she's bringing somebody else's kid or she's just the size of Lizzo, that it's your fault. And that's not the case. It's not your fault. It's war. They're not out, they're not even looking out for their own best interest sometimes. They're sometimes just looking out to make things difficult for you. Don't let these men tell you any different and don't let the women tell you different. Because in an environment like this, if you are doing something wrong, it is because one, you weren't told. And two, if you were doing something wrong, you would never know any, it wouldn't matter because they're coming at you with a warlike mindset anyway. How can they take and not give? If someone's got that mindset, how, what does it matter what you're doing wrong? If I had a flawed personality, but I was attacked by someone that I didn't know, then that's not my personality. Now, if I'm attacked by someone I know, it could be, especially if the person didn't start off hostile. But when I met with hostility from a stranger, my personality flaws don't matter because that's not why I'm being attacked. And that's what you got to understand. You're being attacked when you're not even known very well. That is because it's not about you. It's about the war they're fighting with you for no damn reason.
they're upset with you most of you because you're 87 percent and if all if 100 percent of us looked like a 13 percent now that they want they would still find some other criteria to add to be down a 13 percent they simply want to compete for the same few men and throw a fit when they can't get the commitment from that same few men that's not your fault accept no accountability anymore for anything except that which you have knowledge and control over and when it's pointed out to you by somebody you can trust not when it's pointed out to you by a ma'am dingo or a goon let alone a matriarch or a gynocrat no more accountability because the only see when somebody else starts a war with you the only fair fight is the one you win i hope the one day this message will not be necessary in the meantime i hope it helps blackheart Black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum, and black male heterosexual non-select power specifically because they don't like it.